Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful sunny day. A special welcome to all of Doris Anderson's family who are gathered here for her 100th birthday celebration. Uh, truly a wonderful woman, and you deserve all these people to be here to celebrate your life. Um, so we're so happy that we can make this happen. Um, as we gather together for worship, um, I want you to know that we will be having communion today. And at this congregation, we believe that it is not me who has the host at the table, but it is Jesus Christ. And Jesus always stands with arms wide open, welcoming all people to come to the table. Uh, so if you feel drawn to come to receive uh, God's body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion, please know that you are welcome to come forward and do so. And now before we begin worship, let's acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God that is with us and around us all the time. Take that big breath in and let it out. One more breath in and let it out. And finally, one last breath in and let it out. Now I'd like to invite any children and youth who would like to come forward and gather with me around the font. All right. So we start here. We start at these waters, for we remember that it was God's breath that moved over the waters and called forth all of creation, that it was through water that Moses was able to bring his people out of slavery and into freedom, that it was in water that Jesus Christ was baptized. It was with water that Jesus did his first miracle, turning water into wine. And it is water that continues to give us life, that as it rains now in the spring, new flowers, new grass, buds start to grow on trees and gives us life. So we give thanks for this precious gift of water and life. So get your hands into this water and say a prayer with me. Say, Dear God, Thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of life with you. Bless these waters to us and to those gathered here that we may always remember we are yours. Amen. All right, so now with that water, make the sign of the cross on your own forehead to remember you're a child of God. Get your hand wet again. Make the sign of the cross on somebody else. Make sure they know they are children of God and that they live wet. Get your hand wet one more time, and as you go back to sit down, make sure you get a couple of people wet so that they can remember they too are children of God. Now please stand as you're able as we sing our gathering hymn.
Now together let us join in singing the Kyrie. God of the unknown, your mysteries are astounding. Give us knowledge where you see fit, and let us sit comfortably with that which can never understand. Amen. You may be seated.
Now I'd like to invite uh, any children up again to help me with a children's message. Thank you guys for coming up today. Um, so in our scripture reading today, we're reading from Acts, and we're, we've been following Paul. Um, Paul had this amazing conversion experience where he was actually chasing down Christians, and he was trying to get rid of them. He was trying to throw them in jail, and all of a sudden, as he was going somewhere, this really bright light flashed in front of his eyes, and he went blind. And Jesus came and talked to him and said, Do you know what you're doing I'm the one you're persecuting. Go and do my work instead. And his life got completely changed around, and Christ came to another follower of his and went there, and he baptized Paul, and Paul changed his life, and he started going around to different places to teach about who God is. And then he found himself in Athens. And so what he did in Athens when he got there, he just kind of walked around and he looked around and he saw they had lots of statues, statues to different gods. And um, he also noticed that they really liked to share ideas with each other. That's what they like to do. They just like to share ideas here in Athens. And what he did was is he started noticing and he helped them notice how God was already at work. Um, And so he saw uh, on one of those statues something that said, to an unknown God, to an unknown God. He saw a statue that said, to an unknown God. He said to the Athenian people, you know what? You have this statue that says, to an unknown God. I know who that God is. It's my God. It's Jesus. It's, it's the God who created everything. And I want to teach you more about this God. So he did something really interesting, I think. He looked around to the things that were already there and just said, hey, guess what? This is God. So can you guys help me find God in this room today? Do you guys think you can do that with me? Okay, follow me down here. Follow me. Yeah. Okay, right here. Guess what? I found God. Right here. Yeah. Right here, there's a miracle sitting right here. His name is Ken Olander. And there's a miracle in his life. You know, the heart that's keeping him alive, the heart that he has, is not his own. It was a gift from somebody else that he has and he now enjoys life with. So we find God sitting right here with Ken. Isn't that amazing? Okay, follow me this way. Follow me this way. found God again. Right here, her name is Doris Anderson. She's a hundred years old. That's amazing. And a woman who's given her life for other people, helping kids to learn. She worked in the school systems for many years. She helped to make the schools in Janesville what they are today. Um, For, was it 23 years, right? You were working with the superintendents, three different superintendents, right? Um, And so she helped shape the life of future children. So right here, we can see God at work. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Okay, follow me one more time. Oh, I found God one more time. I don't even know his name. Andrew, Andrew, right here. We've got a little baby. We've got Andrew. (laughs) New life right in front of us. Yes, Andrew has a little lion on his shirt, and he's displaying for us the power of God in new life. And so we can say, look, Here is God, God at work giving new life, all the way from 100 to 1? Yeah? Okay, good. 1. All right, I guess right. Um, Yes, God is at work right here, right now, with new life. Okay, so follow me one more time. Let's gather around the font here one last time, because here, again, is where we find God, in water, the same water that comes out of our faucets at home, uh, the water that's in uh, the lakes and the streams all around us. In this water, we all get new life. We all get to remember that God is at work with us all the time. So can we hold hands around the font, and can we say a prayer together? Say, dear God, thank you for being with us all the time. Open our eyes to see your work. 
everywhere we go. Amen. Thank you guys for helping me. Our first reading will be a psalm reading, and the psalm will be read responsively. Um, And Doris will be leading us in the reading of that psalm. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all of the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous. His marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord. For the God, for the, the gods of the peoples are but idols, but his marvelous. But the Lord. But the Lord. But his marvelous. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. But the what? And the Lord. But the Lord made, made the people. Made the heavens. Honor and The sermon reading today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 31. So Paul found himself alone for some time in Athens. He would walk through the city feeling deeply frustrated about the abundance of idols there. As in previous cities, he went to the synagogue. Once again, he engaged in debate about Jesus with both ethnic Jews and devout Greek-born converts to Judaism. He would even wander around in the marketplace speaking with anyone he happened to meet. Eventually, he got into a debate with some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. Some were dismissive from the start, saying, what's this fast talker trying to pitch? But others said, he seems to be advocating the gods of distant lands. They said this because of what Paul had been preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. This stirred their curiosity because the favorite pastime of Athenians, including foreigners who had settled there, was conversation about new and unusual ideas. So they brought him to the rock outcropping known as the Oropagus, where Athens' uh, intellectuals regularly gathered for debate, and they invited him to speak. May we understand this new teaching of yours? It's intriguingly unusual. We would love to know its meaning. So Paul said, Athenians, I have walked your streets. I have observed your strong and diverse religious ethos. You truly are a religious people. I have stopped again and again to examine carefully the religious statues and inscriptions that fill your city. On one such altar, I read this inscription, to an unknown God, I'm not here to tell you about a strange foreign deity, but about this one, whom you already worship, though without full knowledge. This is the God who made the universe and all it contains, the God who is the king of all heaven and all earth. It would be illogical to assume that a God of this magnitude could possibly be contained in any man-made structure, no matter how majestic, nor would it Be logical to think that this God would need human beings to provide him with food and shelter. After all, he himself would give humans to give has given to humans everything they need life, breath, food, shelter, and so on. 
This God made us in all our diversity from one original person, allowing each culture to have its own time to develop, giving each its own place to live and thrive in its distinct ways. His purpose in all this was that people of every culture and religion would search for this ultimate God, grope for him in the darkness, as it were, hoping to find him. Yet in truth, God is not far from any of us. For you know the saying, we live in God, we move in God, we exist in God. And still another said, we are indeed God's children. Since this is true, since we are indeed offspring of God's creative act, we shouldn't think of the deity as our own artifact, something made by our own hands of this, as if this great universal ultimate creator were simply a combination of elements like gold, silver, and stone. No, God has patiently tolerated this kind of ignorance in the past, but now God says it's time to rethink our lives and reject these unenlightened assumptions. He has fixed a day of accountability when the whole world will be justly evaluated by a higher standard, not by a statue, but by a living man. God selected this man and made him credible to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. So Paul does an interesting thing here. He has some time in Athens and he takes the time to walk around, to speak with people, to see what's important to them, to learn their customs, to learn their traditions, and finally gets an opportunity to really stand up in front of a crowd and to begin to display what his beliefs are, what it means uh, to be a believer in Christ and in God. And he takes a turn as opposed to just saying, Ugh, I can't believe this place. Look at all these idols. You guys are just wrong. Look at all these things. You're terrible. No, he doesn't start there. He first acknowledges who they are, acknowledges their customs, and says, Look, you're a religious people. Look at all of these statues that you have. You're searching for some sort of higher truth and you know, I saw this one statue, I saw this one that said to an unknown God, and this unknown God that you worship, that you acknowledge, this God is the God I know. And so he uses their own customs, he uses their own ethos within Athens to begin to point out that God is already there that God is already at work and at place here in Athens. And so he tries to open up their eyes to see God already in their customs, God already in their beliefs, God already in their midst, which is a really different approach to mission than sometimes is seen and heard, where some might say, well, if I'm the missionary, I take God from this place and I bring it over here. Well, no, that is not the way we do mission work. The way we do mission work is to say, well, here I am, and it doesn't seem like they know about God, but I'm going to find out how God is already at work there. And it is not my job to bring God there because God's already at work, but it's my job to open up their eyes to see God already at work in their midst. It's my job to say, you know what? This unknown God that you are already worshiping, this is the God I know. So, too, now it's our job. It's our job to continually be out in the world paying attention, paying attention uh, to the world around us and having an eye for where God is already at work. I did that with the kids just in this room briefly. Three times we can say, hey, you celebrate this. Guess what? This is God's work right in our hands right now. Um, and it's a privilege to be able to do that. It's an honor to be able to do that. And as disciples, it's our job to do that. It is our job to go out from this place and say, 
you know, right here, this is God at work. And so I've been thinking all week, okay, so I'm new to Janesville, and I've kind of been like Paul, walking around, paying attention. Where do I see God at work in this town? Um, and I can say one thing, one thing I noticed almost immediately arriving here in Janesville is that people in Janesville like to work. These are hardworking people. You like to accomplish things, get things done with your hands, and you feel good about at the end of the day saying, hey, I accomplished something. Um, this is a town that likes to get their hands dirty, likes to get involved, get their some dirt under your fingernails, whether it's uh, painting back here. Uh, I've seen the men's groups doing that all week. You could just see the satisfaction on the guys as they were stripping everything down, putting the paint on that walls, stepping back saying, ah, we did some good work today. And I can say, you know what? That's God at work. You know why? Because we believe in a God that gives you gifts and abilities, and that God gave you the gift of being able to paint that wall really well. And maybe it's God that gave you the gift to build a car really well. Maybe it's God that gave you the gift to do woodwork and do it really well. And and the times when you feel so blessed to have these gifts, to accomplish something with your hands, I know the God that gave you those gifts. I know that God, this Holy Spirit God, this God that infuses every single one of us with gifts to help each other and to help the community. That's the God that I worship. And so that's one uh, that I was thinking about this week. Yes, this God that we can celebrate that has given us these God-given gifts for the sake of one another. Because that's another thing I've noticed about Janesville. Janesville's a city that wants to stand up for each other, that wants to make things work, that wants to be there for those who don't have. And something in particular in this congregation too, you want to be there for those people who are going through a difficult time. And guess what? That's God at work too, because I believe in a God where this Holy Spirit takes over. And rather than being selfish, rather than just, you know, staring at yourself, this God lifts up your head and gives you the ability to see other people and to see them with love and take, take care of them. Guess what? That is God at work. That thing that makes you want to look up and to see other people and to take care of them, that is God at work in this community. And so again, I can say, here is God. So I want to give you an opportunity right now just to practice. Go ahead and think about the things that you do throughout the week, what you do uh, here in Janesville, your life. Um, and if you're not from Janesville, think about your hometown too. Um, where do you already see God at work? Where might you say, you know what? Right here, this, this is the God I believe in. This is God already at work in my life, in this place. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you a couple moments of silence just to think about that. Think about where is God already at work in your life, in your community. So go ahead, take, take some time to think about that. And now, if you've got something to share in your mind, I want you to turn to somebody uh, and actually share. Uh, share with somebody next to you where you already see God at work in your community, in your life, in your family, wherever it might be, whatever it was that you thought of. Uh, declare God already at work to somebody next to you. And if you're not sitting next to somebody, scoot and find somebody. <laughs>
All right. So apparently you've been able to see God at work in, in life and in your community. So I just want three people to share, uh, three brave people to stand up and declare God, point God out in life for us. So just raise your hand and I'll run to you with this microphone so we can all hear you. Point God out to us. You have any volunteers? Somebody willing to share where you saw God, where you can see God? Okay. I saw two hands. I'll get to you next. I think we all see them in the health care workers and teachers in our community. Mm. Yes, thank you. Marv won't say it, so I'll say it for him. Meals on Wheels. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the helping of Echo, helping everybody. Mm-hmm. Any others? Oop. Yeah. Uh, my wife Peggy has some special needs, and I reached out uh, in front of me because we have a befriender that comes visits with Peggy. We have a strong woman in front of Peggy, and then we have some pizzas <laughs> in our refrigerator next to me. In our uh, in our congregational and communal love for Isaac Johnson and our prayers for his healing. For several years since moving to Janesville, I've been saying that this community needed an arts program for underprivileged children, and imagine my surprise when God already put other people with that same heart and, and mission in their mind, and was, I was able to just step right into that this year. Uh, Bob and Julie Seiler, Kathy Witzak, and myself went to Tennessee this past week to do mission work. The work that we were supposed to be doing, there were 20 of us all together, fell through. It was raining all week. And so here we are, what do we do? And it was frustrating initially, but we decided this too is going to work out. And the Spirit brought us four new sites um, where we were helping people whose houses had been burned to the ground. Hmm. And I'll just share Eleanor's. Uh, she, I was sharing with her, and she said, "You know, um, I see God just in creation." Yesterday, we went to a Lutherdale Bible camp, and um, she said, "You know, just in seeing God's good creation, uh, that's God's work." And we were right next to a beautiful lake uh, with the sun shining, and just being able to say, "You know what? God created all of this." Um, and so you've got it in you, okay? We've practiced here, and now your job, my weekly challenge to you is to go out from here and share that good news with people. Share that good news of an unknown God. Point God out at work already in the places around you. When people ask, you know, why, why is it that you reach out? Why is it that you support Echo? It says, you know what? I believe in a God that opened me up to do so. And that's why I'm in the world. So why do you recycle? Why do you take care of creation? Well, because I believe God made this beautiful, gorgeous world and gave me gifts and abilities to take care of it. And people maybe ask, well, why do you come back here to paint the walls and to do some woodwork? Well, it's because God gave me gifts, and I want to use those gifts for the sake of other people. Um, so go out from here, pay attention, look around, and name God at work in your midst. Because when we do that, we open up each other to God's good work. We open each other up to the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus Christ is present, then anything can happen. Healing can happen, restoration can happen, salvation can happen. When we tap into that source, into the source of water, to the source of spirit, to the source we have Jesus Christ. Uh, at the table of mercy, anything is possible. Amen. Now please stand as you are able as we sing our sermon hymn.
And now using the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father Almighty, Creator Now let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those who are in need of God's grace. God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see, to see you at work in our midst, in our communities, in our families, in this country, and in the world. And may that Spirit stir us up to proclaim you in the world so that others too might hear of this unknown God that is constantly at work in the restoration of this world. Lord, in your mercy. God, we ask for you to send your Holy Spirit to all those who are in leadership around the world. May you give them the ability to lead people towards a world where there is peace, where there is love, and where there is justice. Lord, in your mercy. God, we ask for you to be with all those who give themselves in service to others, for missionary, for servicemen and women in the armed forces, for doctors and nurses, for teachers. Might you continue to work through them and for those who are away, bring them home safe. Lord, in your mercy. God, we take time to lift up to you those who are going through difficult times. Especially pray for John Spoden, Colleen Schroeder, John Tollefson, Ron Brown, Doris Anderson, Martel Onsrud, Beverly Schaber, Janine Milis, Isaac Johnson, Jean Arnold, Cleo Salmon, Joe and Laura Paulzine, Don Lunderberg, Sandy Valentine, Gary Burcell, Janet Herman, Juanita and Mick Jensen, Lori Ellinger, Fern Severson, and all those who we name out loud now. God, we ask for you to show up once more, to bring light into their darkness, to bring your peace that surpasses all understanding that you might bring healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, we pray for this community, for Faith Lutheran Church, that we might live into our mission to be people of God, empowered by word and sacrament, reaching out in love. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all and show a sign of God's love with one another. Your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is a new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Now gather together around the Lord's table. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. As you come forward to participate of this great Thanksgiving, you can extend your hands to receive the bread, and you may dip it either into the wine, which is red wine, or grape juice, which is white grape juice. If you have a need for a gluten-free wafer, we do have that available. Please just ask. And I will say again that at this table, it is not I who am the host, but it is Jesus Christ, and Jesus always stands with arms wide open. So please know that you are welcome. Please come. The table is ready. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, grant you grace and keep you in his peace. Amen. And now um, we're going to have a special commissioning of our befrienders. So I would invite, uh, if you are one of the befrienders being commissioned today, to come forward. For those of you who don't know who Befrienders are, uh, it's a ministry that we have here uh, at Faith Lutheran Church and is connected with a broader group too, and they are Befrienders. They go out to befriend God's people on our behalf. They go out to speak with them when they're going through difficult times, to walk with them, uh, to take communion uh, as well. And so we are commissioning you to be extensions, to be our hands at work in the community. The church, as the body of Christ, has many faces. The church prays and worships. It speaks words of instruction and healing, cleanses us from our sins, invites us to the table of the Lord, binds us together in a covenant of love, sends us out to minister, anoints us when we are sick or dying, and accompanies us in our search for meaning and our daily need for support. All these faces might not come to us from those we look to as, as to our leaders. But when we live our lives with a simple trust that Jesus comes to us in our church, we will see the church's ministry in places and in faces where we least expect it. If we truly love Jesus, Jesus will send the people to us that we most need. Kathy, Kathy, Donna, Barb, what? Pastor Felix? <laughs> you have responded to God's call to use your gifts to serve others. You have been called forth by this faith community and supported in this ministry by our church leaders. Are you willing to serve as a listening, supportive presence with those to whom you are called as a befriender? We are. Do you promise to continue to deepen your understanding of your ministry through regular participation in continuing education and reflection on your ministry? I do. Do you promise to keep confidentiality? Do you acknowledge your own need for ministry and recognize the experience of being brought closer to God's presence through the life stories of the people that you serve? I do. 
congregation, will you as a congregation help to discern, to foster, to encourage, and to receive these gifts by the Spirit to this community of faith? If so, please say, we will. A blessing. May you and those you visit be nourished by God's presence as you share in the story of their journey. In the name of Faith Lutheran Church, we commission you to minister in our midst, offering compassion and love. Would all the other befrienders please stand as we pray? If you're here, thank you. Teach me to listen, O God, to those nearest me, my family, my friends, my co-workers. Help me to be aware that no matter what words I hear, the message they're sending is, accept the person I am. Listen to me. Teach me to listen, my caring God, to those far from me, the whisper of hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach me to listen, O God, to myself. Help me to be less afraid to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of me. Teach me to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach me, Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. Let us congratulate our newest befrienders. Now a few announcements. Should have just stayed up here, Barb. I am another person who is a part of our church council. My area is called Life and Faith. And Life and Faith is the part that supports all of our social functions of the congregation. I have many congregation members that work with me to organize and plan those functions. I basically see Life and Faith as a way of sharing God's love and to build community. Now, I need a little feedback from you this morning. If you felt God's presence here and you felt a sense of community, I want you to say, Wahoo! Wahoo! That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be louder in a year from now because we're going to continue to build that. But I want, one thing I want you to do today and every day that you come is if you feel a part of this community just like you said to me right now, and you see someone in, the, in our congregation, and it doesn't have to be a member, it, you know, whoever, who may not feel that sense of community, start building a relationship with them by just saying hi, introducing yourself, and finding them. Sue Hansen's been patient with me. I've asked her three times what her name is, and finally, I think I have it now because I practiced it. So that is our job, to share God's love and to build community. Another way to build community is to read your bulletin. And that's really why I'm here today. Um, notice in your bulletin, there's an advertisement or marketing for our church in the park. Full page of two parts. That is a way um, to build community and be a part of that. Um, the Life and Faith community happens to support that and we'll be pulling that together for you. That's something co coming up. Today we have an open house for our dear friend Doris, who led us in worship today, which was absolutely wonderful. 
Uh, graduation Sunday is coming up, so if you have anyone in your family or you know someone who's graduating, please call the office so that we can get their name and they can be a part of our celebration. I see the rummage sale is coming. Um, I see that um, there's going to be a prayer activity today where the pastor is going to lead prayer partners after worship, so that's part of diving in. Very important chart in here that it would be great for you to read all of these highlighted areas, which I'm not going to read because it's already late, are areas that life and faith is a part of, and it's a part that you can be a part of. And then this week, if I, we could please ask for prayers, because our executive team, which is part of council, and our all-team meeting, which is an extension of the council, will be meeting to plan, organize, and help learn how we can better share God's love, and build community. So we need prayers for our leaders of the church. Thank you and welcome to all of our new people that are here, the guests that have been loving Doris for up to 100 years. That's why she's 100, because she's had relationships and love all these years. So thanks for coming. And I want to say one more thing. You know, we go from doing Thanksgiving dinner in life and faith, and if anybody's interested in doing that, raise your hand. Cooking 12 or 14 turkeys all the way down to two women that if we have a visitor or somebody new in church, Monday morning they come into church and they write them a note that gets sent in the mail. So those are the extension of life and faith and anything in between. I'm going to be back in the narthex today or the gathering space. If you would like to be a part of building that community, come see me and I'll find something for you to do both small and large. Still looking for a turkey baker. <laughs> uh, so we can't um, finish worship today without singing happy birthday uh, to Doris, but also I found out this morning we have somebody else, Lauren Deutscher. It's her birthday today. Um, so you want to stand up? You can stand on the pew so everybody can see you. There we go. She's right there. So we're singing happy birthday to Doris and Lauren. Happy If you want to come back to the church between 2 and 4, there will be an open house downstairs for you to share some stories with Doris, to look at her beautiful paintings that are downstairs, and to share in that good community and fellowship. And now please rise as you are able as we sing each other out with a final blessing. May the Lord rise up to me.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And if you want to... If you want to stick around to do some prayer partners, I have some sheets for you. Please stick around in the sanctuary. We'll do that in a few minutes. Thank you. 